Hello and welcome to part 9 of my George Thomas dividing head build. Before we get into this, I first need to give a massive thanks to Rotary SMP, who took the time to give my channel a mention in his video a couple of weeks ago. To all of those people who found themselves here because of that, I'm really pleased you're here and I hope it's not too disappointing. With that said, let's get back onto the dividing head. This time we are going to tackle the division plate blanks to fit on here and have a look at the sector fingers that are used to help with the hole counting. The first thing to do is to face these plates to thickness and bore them to be a close fit on the mount there. So let's go. Again, I'm employing the forejaw because of its size and I am trying to get these to within a couple of thou of true as although they will get a light skim off their diameter, they are already at the specified four inches and I don't want to have to remove any more material than is necessary to clean up that surface. With the first side faced, I can flip the part and hold it parallel by using a couple of spacers between the face side and the jaws. The part can then be clocked in as before and the spacers removed with a brass drift before starting the machine. This can then be faced to thickness and the center board to 0.938 to fit onto the mount. Now this needs to be a pretty good fit as this is the locating feature for the plates and a poor fit here would make aligning the finished plates with the plunger arc if not difficult, then definitely irritating. We are to size and the fit on the bracket is good. A chamfer on the front and at the back of the hole completes the work in this setup and we can move on to the OD. To machine this, I have again made a mandrel in place with a sleeved clamp that should hold these firmly enough. Thinking ahead a little, I have also machined a short section back from the shoulder to a nominal size as I think I can use this mandrel again when drilling the plates. A skim off the factory surface and a chamfer on both sides completes the turning work. So let's take these over to the mill to finish the drilling. With the mandrel parted off and held in the vise, I can center find the part and then use this to hold all three plates in the same place for drilling. After double checking my alignment with an indicator, I can mount the first plate. I have it resting on the jaws of the vise rather than on the shoulder of the mandrel and I'm only applying light pressure on the clamps to avoid any distortion of the part. This doesn't have to be held particularly firmly as almost all of the forces are going to be downwards. It just needs to not move. I am drilling the same hole pattern as the mount from last time and again I am using the bolt hole feature on the DRO to space these out. They are all drilled clearance for M4 and are all countersunk at a quarter inch and I'm taking the countersink approximately 1 16th below the surface to completely sink those screw heads. That is the last one, so let's see how they look. Back at the bench again, and the three plates are faced, bored, chamfered, drilled, and countersunk. Off camera, I have lightly deburred the back of the holes with a countersink and a battery drill, and I have gone back in on the mill with this wide angle cutter just to take the edge off the top of those counterports. I hope you can see here that even reducing the size of these to quarter inch, they are still very close to that central bore. If I were to do this over, I'd probably increase that PCD by a sixteenth or so and use the original specification fasteners. Given I won't be doing that, I have gone ahead and turned down the mounting screws to size and they are a nice fit in the plates. The whole thing fits nicely onto the head with no perceptible play in the locating faces and they are ready for drilling. Thomas has detailed a fairly clever way of using the dividing head itself to drill its own plates. But to be able to do that, we need all of the other parts made and fitted. So let's move on to the sector fingers. These will be made out of this 16 gauge mild steel sheet. So let's get these marked out and cut to size. I have cleaned the sheet with some isopropyl alcohol and just straightened the long edges with a file to give me something to work from. The two fingers are identical in shape and I am marking them out at the same time from opposite edges. Now I will often roughly mark out parts before transferring them to the mill, but in this case the entire shape will be completed with handwork alone, so I am being quite careful with the dimensions on this. The hole positions are centre punched, moving them if necessary until they fall on the scribe lines to provide a positive location for the dividers. One of the fingers has an additional hole to take a clamp, and a quick sanity check of the dimensions with a rule completes this layout. 
Now I could have easily saved myself some of this material by shifting this component across and nesting it with the other, but I'm afraid I didn't bother to check before I started marking out, so I will just have to live with a loss of that 2 inch square piece of steel. Before I cut these out, let's take them over to the mill and locate those holes. I am locating the first centre punch with a wiggler, and then using the DRO to move to the other hole positions. The odd clamp hole is simply drilled, but I'm going to ream the matching holes on both parts so that I can use them for location. The small one is reamed to 1 8 which is slightly larger than specified, but will allow me to use a location pin. And similarly, the large hole which will be bored is reamed to 3 8 Along with taking a locating pin, this will also give me a nice surface to pick up when I set up for that boring. Off camera, I have drilled the second part and cut the sheet, so we now have two identically shaped pieces. Those reamed holes will allow me to pin the two together so that they will stay aligned while cutting and filing. So let's get on with it. Now, my sheet metal working skills are rather poor, and on top of that, I'm really not set up for handling the material. This would have been much easier to attempt using a bench peg or at least a tabletop in the vise. In the absence of both of those things, I will continue to hack at the waste material with increasingly coarse saws until I have most of it removed. Every time I have to do something like this, I really think I should take some time to make it less painful. Maybe next time. With the majority of the waste sawn off, I have taken this over to the sander and taken what I can down close to the lines, and the rest I will do with file work. For the small radius, I have made a filing button of the correct size that will sit in the 1 8 hole, and I will just complete the larger one by eye. So let's go! It is now just a case of filing these down to the lines, taking care to keep the edges as square as possible, and keeping an eye on the location pins that constantly fall onto the floor. Hemingway kits sell a die filing attachment for the lathe that would be ideal for this, and I've been looking at it for a while. Now there are a few examples on YouTube already, but if anyone would be interested in seeing me make one of those, please do let me know. With the shaping complete, I'm just touching the edges with a stone to soften them, and we are ready for boring. So let's head on over to the mill. I am setting these up on a scrap piece of mild steel that fortuitously already has a largish hole in it. This will give me both something to bore into, and make measuring my progress slightly easier. Simply holding some 3 8 round stock in the collet makes aligning both pieces and finding the centre very straightforward. With the small ends held by a pin, I can clamp both of the parts to the mill table, with a scrap of brass between all surfaces. Now this does need to be fairly secure, as the boring operation can have a tendency to try and move the part. To further reduce that risk, I will also be cautious with the depth of cut once the boring head is installed. With the finger secured and the DRO zeroed, I am opening out the hole initially with a 5 8 drill. This is then enlarged to 3 quarters before switching out to the boring head to open out to the final 0.950. I'm taking about 25 thou off diameter per pass here, checking progress with a telescoping gauge as we go. Now, while this dimension is not hugely critical, as I can make the mating part to suit, I do like to hit the numbers where I can, just for the satisfaction as much as anything. A final pass brings us to size, and after making sure there is nothing more to do in this setup, I can remove them from the mill. Over at the bench, and here they are. As these are to be bent, and have handles fitted to them, it will be quite difficult to clean them up. So, off camera, I have just touched the faces of these on some wet and dry while I still can. I haven't gone too mad, and there are still some marks that were present on the factory surface, but I'm reasonably content with the results. As I mentioned earlier, sheet metalwork is not my forte, so any part that comes out looking half decent, I'm going to count as a win. I just need to try and not damage them too much during the remaining work. They will sit on the division plate like this, and for some reason, to me, it is these parts that really highlight just how small this dividing head is. With the machinery that I have, even a small commercial head would take up most of my working space, so this makes me much happier than it really should. Anyway, I think I will call it a day for this video. Next time, I need to make the retaining nut and spring to hold these on, along with the ball knobs for the ends, and the clamping arrangement to set the finger spacing. So please do look out for that if you're interested. 
Again, do leave any thoughts in the comments. If you do want to see more like this, please do subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you again. Cheerio.